Warning! Warning! I am an idiot. I'm just a guy in a pole barn. Get it? Pole barn garage. Anything I say to do, you do at your own risk. I'm just some dude. Let that be your disclaimer. Let's get on with the show. Welcome back, everybody, friends and enemies, to another episode of Pole Barn Garage. Today is going to be something a little bit different because I need a little bit of a break from that GTO, and maybe you do too. So we'll see how this plays out. And Maybe we could make this a semi-regular thing too. But I've got some work to do to the gold Le Mans over there. So let's clear some space out here and uh, show you what I've got going on here. It's a warmer than normal day out here. So we're just going to work out here in the open side. And uh, we're just going to move this gal out of the way. It's about 40 some degrees out. Let's see. So what I'm doing here is no doubt going to be controversial, but I am kind of tired of these. These are 17 inch US wheel ramblers, and they're 17 eighths all the way around. And I bought them before they were cool, and now I'm bored of them. I've had those on here for probably at least six or seven years, and it's time for something different. So here's what I bought, Buick Grand National wheels. There's a guy here locally, had them for sale, $360 for a set of four of these. Two brand new tires on the front and some pretty halfway decent BFGs on the back. Couldn't argue with that. But they need a little paint work and a little polishing. So I figured we could make a little short and sweet video of just cleaning these up, throwing them on the car, and maybe taking it for a drive. So here's going to be our plan of attack here. Obviously a lot of this black paint here is chipping and peeling away and uh, they've also been coated in some kind of slime so I'm just gonna <clears throat> try to knock off the edges of this they don't need to be perfect and how I'm gonna do that is just with some steel wool this is medium grade and maybe a little bit too aggressive but I wanted to try it and see if that would work and I also got 4 aught steel wool. It's a lot finer. And this will work well to polish the chrome too. The number one steel wool to knock down and scuff up the area where we're going to paint. And then we're going to use the quadruple aught to polish the chrome up and knock some of these pits off because they are original GM wheels. They're old. But what we're going to use to get the slime off of these is just some good old prep sol or wax and grease remover and so after we're done scuffing them up we'll wipe them down with that and shoot some paint on them may try to mask them I don't know we'll see how that goes so we got to mask off to paint this right so get yourself a box like that and you can tuck that around the edges and boom your outside edge is masked. I don't think I'm going to waste a bunch of time trying to mask off all of this. Probably just spray it and take the steel wool and take off what we don't want. I know some guys use like Vaseline and smear that where they don't want it but it's a big old mess. And I don't know about that. but. And I may take some tape and try to get this edge around here in the inside because we need that to be a sharp edge. But other than that, I don't think I want to worry too much about that. So our flavor of paint is going to be a good old Dupla Color semi-gloss black engine enamel. 
because it holds up good. Probably better even than restoling them for this job. Oh yeah. The thing about this stuff is it sticks to any. Pretty much just gonna fog it in there. We'll come back and put a few more coats on it later. These are turning out okay. They need about 314 more coats, but they'll work. Ran out of cardboard for this one, so it's going to take some extra polishing. This American-made cardboard doesn't work nearly as good as that Chinese cardboard. So you might wonder, you know, where did this car come from? Well, I've had this car since I was, I think, 14 years old. And maybe I was 15? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it was sitting in a field just south of where I live about an hour. And uh, the rear end in it was blown up and I don't know, it was very, very rough. Anyway, me and my dad went and got it. And uh, it isn't my first car actually. My first car was a 65 Mustang and I traded that for a 76 Ford Ranchero and then traded the Ranchero to my dad for this as a pile. So we found a, a rear end to put in it, found out the motor was a 389 in it, out of like a 66 big car. I patched it up, you know, I mean, to the best of a 15 year old ability. And uh, the brakes and stuff were sketch. It was four wheel drums. And I mean, car itself was real sketch, but I drove it all through high school. I drove it in yellow primer for a couple of years. Then I uh, painted the car go green, a uh, Mopar color. And uh, drove it the rest of high school like that. Then graduated and I had it all raked up and stuff with big N50s. And I said, ah, I don't want that anymore. So I lowered the car to basically where it is now. Put all this aftermarket suspension in it. Painted the car white with eyebrow stripes and, uh, and rallies. And then I put these wheels on it and I did the interior. It was originally a bench seat base Le Mans. Now it's got buckets and a console and everything. It's far from perfect. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, it's not the nicest car in the world. It's got plenty of rust still and I don't know. I just keep painting over it. But, you know, it's decent. This car and I have been through eight a lot together and uh in the what now 14 years that i've owned it um we've done everything together i've driven this car all over the country i've taken on many a road trip i've blown up two engines in it it's now on its fourth or fifth engine uh, now with a fresh 455 uh, i've blown up two transmissions three rear ends in it over the years so it's just one of those you know and man there's remnants of my childhood all over this thing holes drilled all over the place for stupid things like ladder bars and stuff and i don't know but anyway this car has got me out of a lot of trouble time to time uh you know the local law enforcement was very well aware of its existence and uh, it got me away from them a couple of times. And if I had to pick one car out of everything I own to drive through the gates of hell, it'd probably be this one. I just figured a little backstory while we wait for the paint to dry would be nice. It needs a lot still, but I'm in no hurry. The car's never going anywhere. I'll never sell it. So with the fresh motor it's got now, the transmission's starting to go again. And the rear end is a 273 or something geared uh, posi. BOP, that's pretty lame, but you know, it's got enough torque to make up for it. But I don't know, it still needs a lot of work, but 
you might see that someday, you might not, but I figured this would just be a little change of pace, but really not that much different. Today's sponsor, sponsor is Odelphi Strip Lamp Pro. This is this headband thing here. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was a little skeptical. I really was. I mean, we've all seen this stuff at, like, you know, other big box stores and stuff, and it's never what it's cracked up to be. Look at these LEDs. This stuff flexes like crazy. And it's actually, like, super comfortable. You can adjust this down to fit even my big old head. And the dude, it is. I am thoroughly impressed. Wait till you see it turn on. I mean, I'm going to put a link down in the description for this, for the money. These are excellent. I, I'm going to use the crap out of this. And I'm not... I am not exaggerating. You all know me. I'm a Midwestern boy, and if I don't like something, well, I ain't gonna say that I like it, you know what I mean? So check this out, though. Look at this. It's got spotlight, and it's dimmable on all the settings, but just this, this bar light thing, which is probably like super bright for you guys, is crazy. If you walk around at nighttime, if you walk around at nighttime with this thing on, it's like daylight. And I'm not kidding you. The spotlight thing has got a pretty good range on it. I'd say about 100 yards. And it is just thoroughly impressive. It's rechargeable, no batteries. Just plug it in like you do your phone. I am incredibly impressed. If you're a hunter or something like that, this would be invaluable. Just strap this thing to your head and there you go. You got the freaking sun following you around. I'm super impressed. There's going to be a link down to their website in the description. Check that out for me. Odelphi. Good job with this. Now we're down to here. We've got our slots painted and, uh, you know, it all looks okay. We could go back and touch it up a little later and probably improve it. we got to get our extra paint off, right? What I'm going to do is take a little bit of lacquer thinner, throw it on one of these cheap green rags, Get a little thinner, just a touch, and then start to clean it up with that. All this overspray, if you catch it before it dries, dries, you can get ahead of it and it'll come off a lot easier. Even if you just use the thinner to kind of soften up the paint, and then come back with some steel wool, you'll get the job done for sure. This is a long process, and a boring one. I consider it meditation. There's one done. Pretty good. We'll polish the chrome a little better once that paint totally cures. So now we got three more to go. I'm gonna just knock them out because this is gonna take a minute. Paint taking too long to dry. Heat gun. Guaranteed to improve the enjoyment of watching paint dry by 25%. If only they made some kind of protective equipment for your hands. They just don't though. Like some sort of slip on covering that could keep them from looking like this. Dang it. All right, there's four wheels done up. So what next? Well, let's hit them with a little polish. The rear ones especially. Chrome on them's a little bit. Eh. They make all kinds of wheel polishes and cleaners, but a regular old cutting compound does a pretty good job too. We'll just kind of, this is probably the worst wheel of the bunch. So we'll just kind of test on it. And see if it's even worth bothering with. Yeah, I think it might be. It's probably hard to tell on camera, but th there's a noticeable difference in shine. Well, I'm going to call those polished. Once that paint cures up all the way, we'll go ahead and wash them real good. But they're not bad. All of the tires are flat, so that's a really good sign. Another pro tip here when you're buying used wheels, 
Always put the worst one on the right rear, because it's the one you look at the least. Uh, tires have worn pretty good on it over the years. And we'll put the center caps in them too. I just they're hundred and twenty dollars. I haven't got around to buying them yet. Oh, actually, that's pretty wicked looking. <laughs> now we can kind of see where I'm going. Oh, well, that brake is doing nothing. I guess it's tight on the bag. No, it's not. Ah. So we got brake problems. Rubbing on the brake count. I thought GNX's had four wheel disc. It's not rubbing that bad. We tried to clearance it. Yes. All the purists avoid your, just divert your eyes, okay? This is not a problem I foresaw. Man, what is it hitting on so badly in there? Looks like it may just be a little bit more. After much grinding and gnashing of the teeth, it's on there. You're plugged in because you died. But uh, it's still rubbing a little bit. We're just going to let that self clearance, hopefully. It's not that bad. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, and I just want you to see the finished result here soon. Many frustrating hours later. I gotta say, I kind of like it. Let's throw the other one on. That's probably going to do it for this one. I tried to get a better burnout video at O'Reilly, but my GoPro screwed up, so that's what we got. I like how it looks. It's not bad. It's a change of pace. So, thanks for watching, guys. This was a little different, and you know, I know you're, it's a little different than you're used to, but it's okay. We're still going to get right back to work on the GTO. And uh, we're going to jump right back into that. I just needed to do something different. And I thought this would be easy, but of course nothing ever is. Anyway, like, subscribe, share with your friends. All about cars, doing burnouts, having fun. 
Thanks for watching again, guys. We'll see you next time. Pole Barn Garage.